Okay, so really quick, I, I want to make sure to bring up the map here. So the second, the next stereotype that I actually want to bring up that we're going to consider is... There's no easy way to say this. And I'm probably going to get a bunch of people screaming at me for making this mention, mm -hmm. but I'm going to. The next one is actually like the competition for Mashimir, because she comes in a little bit later and she comes to check in on his progress. Flame Newt. She's a weird like soldier reporter. I think she's a soldier, but I can't confirm it. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember her name, so please don't ask me. Frankly, she's so weird, I couldn't remember her name even if I wanted to. And she's kind of the overly flirtatious woman stereotype, if that makes sense, Alex. Yeah. In fact, she literally comes out, she's got literally three colors in her hair. She's <laughs> she's literally out of like an 80s. She's out of she's out of the series gem. That's where she's from. Mm -hmm. She is literally out of the series gem. She is truly, truly outrageous. I can't think of a better way to say it other than that. But it gets weirder because she does actually come with like an elite mobile suit. So you'd think we'd, we'd see her fighting a lot. Mm -hmm. No, she actually hates her mobile suit. Now that would be a cool character detail, right? Yeah. Until she reluctantly has to step into her mobile suit. Then we have a problem. That problem being... Junior! That's she... Things get a little... Heated. Uh -huh. When she gets into her mobile suit. How? What do you mean? Um, I don't know how to describe it without being lewd. So here we go. Well, get I'm thoroughly convinced there's some kind of a dildo on the seat. Oh, jeez. And look. the reason I'm convinced of this is for one simple reason. Or I, I don't even know why I said it that way. But when she gets into the mobile suit, eventually she starts complaining and flailing around either the beam saber or just randomly shooting. Mm -hmm. And then when they cut to her in the cockpit, it's always an upper view. And she's always saying, and granted, this is translation, people. But she's always saying something to the effect of <coughs> just a little more, just a little more. And she looks hot and she looks a little bothered. <laughs> looks like she's orgasming. Yes, yes, for lack of a better term, yes. She looks like she's seriously orgasming. And so at that, and obviously she looks pretty hot. So I'm not sure if she was completely made to be a fan service -y character. I don't know. Sounds like it. All I know is that when she gets on, I get a little awkward. Because I don't know what they're doing with her. It really is similar to... I, I complained about this a little bit when I was reviewing Zeta, but they eventually bring back a female character, but she's kind of warped. She's kind of mm -hmm. uh, not psychotic, but out there. Yeah. Because she thinks she's a little girl, but she's like a girl or like a 18, 19 year old girl. But she thinks she's a little girl. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what what thoughts came to my mind is that she's like a cyber new type. And therefore, that's why she's so weird in personality. Mm hmm. But yeah, we have a lot of those moments. And the game, or and I almost said end the game. And the series likes to put her in skimpy outfits. In fact, the most recent episode I'm watching, they basically gave her an outfit with no pants. Yeah, one of those kinds of outfits, people. Oh my, you guys are so strong. You must have, fu you must have felled many a monster by now. Huh? Well, not really. <laughs> I, I'm embarrassed. Okay. I actually think we've got one more cave to go into because this is actually moving the plot forward. <laughs> so, yeah, we have this character. I don't know how much else I can say on the matter without being extremely creepy to people. Mm -hmm. um, the other one that I wanted to bring up, obviously, was the sister because it still bugs me that she is a fan service -y character, and by that I mean there have been more upskirt shots of her in this series than of any other mature character in this series. Right. And again, she is like, she's got to be 10, 11, maybe 12. Mm-hmm. Okay? That bugs me to no end. Mm-hmm. There's actually a point 
this is how bad it gets before mm. people complain to me. There is a point where she is captured by Zeon, and apparently the guy that captures her has a crush on one of the other characters we'll get to in a minute, but is from, like, a aristocratic family and has a little sister. Mm -hmm. So he tends to, or while he has her captured, she can't just stay in a space suit the entire time, right? Right. So he decides to, actually, you know what? I'm going to use this. Um, who needs it? Nobody needs it. No, Chaz can use it. Just go ahead and use it. Yeah, we wanted we wanted to get this. Just because it helps out with the healing process. So, yeah, he has, like, these exquisite ball gowns from his little sister. Why he would have that in his duffel bag, I don't know. <laughs> but they actually put her in this outfit... And they still can, like, again, this is a gown all the way down to her feet, and they still find a way to do an upskirt shot. <laughs> nice. Again, 12 years old, people. <laughs> really hard to do. Really, really hard to do those moments. So mm -hmm. I already have that kind of a beef. Mm -hmm. But let's go ahead and get into the next character, who is the first ever, at least to my knowledge, in the Gundam series, female pilot. Because mm -hmm. the way she actually gets... She gets introduced in the whole arc to bring the double Zeta to Judah. Because the Zeta at this point is out uh, is out of date. And they actually do have the double Zeta ready to go. Right. Which is more of a combinable mobile suit. And she brings actually one of the parts for it. But she's an expert pilot... She's also a bit of an airhead. <laughs> right? I'm not kidding. There's actually a point in one of the episodes where her and um, Fa from Zeta mm -hmm. get into a fight about the fact that Fa is... This is around the time when Fa actually has left the ship where I'm at mm -hmm. because she wants to go take care of Camille. Mm -hmm. Obviously. She, she cares about Camille. She wants to take care of him. And this pilot actually gives her crap because the reason she's so angry because she's trying to make that decision in the episode of whether or not to actually leave. And it's a beautifully done episode, at least from her perspective, but she basically tries to make her out to be an old maid. And so they have a cat fight with, again, anime stereotype, pulling Jude out into the middle of it. Right. So I like the fact that we have this character and that she's got actually some good stories to tell. However, I'm also pissed off because since she is kind of a, for lack of a better word, bimbo character, mm -hmm. she gets on my nerves for that simple reason. Mm -hmm. And I don't, in fact, she's actually the reason that, that uh, Judah's sister gets abducted. Right. Because she actually took her out to go lecture Judah some more and... The guy from Zeon has a crush on her because, mm -hmm. well, she pulled off some. How, how did he, how did she do it? She fake cried. That's what she did. She got caught by the Zeons, made it sound like she was a, a dumb bimbo, mm -hmm. fake cried, and therefore the guy has a crush on her now. Okay. Yeah, this happened, people. So you have that character, and then I also just want to get into some of the other character in characters involved in Judah's little gang. Because they have interesting arcs to add. So obviously you have the one understanding friend who is the one who explains about the weird freaking honor code for Judal. Right. So you have to have that. You also have two other friends who are way into the whole salvager thing. And they actually end up betraying the ship. Because they, they literally want to get their hands on the Zeta. And the double Zeta later. And they are literally, like, feeding information to Zeon. Mm hmm So they're kind of being jerks about it. And eventually they leave the ship, which I was happy about. And even better, it's almost, you know, the stereotypes get even better. There is an obligatory girl character. But she's a Tom... She's totally a tomboy. <laughs> but she totally doesn't have a crush on Judal. <laughs> Nobody can see you doing air quotes, Adam. That's why I'm doing the Judal. 
yeah, they, they have the assertive tomboy character who eventually does become a mobile suit pilot uh, to protect you all, but it's very clear she has a crush on him and, and wants to be able to get along with him. But you know what? Considering I like Lunamaria, I'm not I'm not disappointed by that concept. All right, here comes Seth again. But yep. that was splendid. It was indeed. I would love to have that kind of strength. This is the result of many hours of training. You can become just as strong too if you put in the effort. Hmm, training. Interesting. When did you ever do any training, Chaz? Shh! <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, short stuff. Okay, so this is... Okay, we have one more staircase I want to go up. Because I have a feeling it's got a chest in it. So, those are kind of the characters that we've come across. Now I get to go into some of the episodes. Okay. So, I guess as a mecha fan, I ought to explain, you know, my thoughts on the Double Zeta. I love the Double Zeta. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the fact that it's kind of a Megazord Gundam. Um, the best way to explain it to you would be the Impulse. Right. Where there's three pieces. There's an upper, there's a lower, and then there's a core fighter that merges them. Mm -hmm. um, but I love the fact that in the cockpit is a Megazord-type button that is Double Zeta, and that's how you, you line everything up and become Double Zeta. Right. Um, I love the design for it. It's technically bigger, which would make sense because it's part of three major core fighters and all that. Its weapons are bigger and much more devastating, which makes sense. You might want to heal up. Uh, I'm not healing Seth, but... Heal Chaz. But Chaz keeps on getting himself into trouble. <laughs> so I do love the double Zeta. A lot of people were actually asking if I would like... Or if I like that, and I hadn't come to it yet. Mm -hmm. But I do love the double Zeta. I also love the fact that the Zeta is still being utilized... In the series, um, the the girl pilot is, I believe, who's going to pilot it. Okay. So I'm happy about that, too. I like the fact that they're still used, kind of like the, when the Archangel gets the freedom mm -hmm. and they still have the strike, uh, but it's piloted by Lou. I like that idea. Because when you have a perfectly functional mobile suit, you might as well just use it. So I love the mecha involved here. And I also love some of the episodes because... Even though some of them just get absolutely stupid silly, <laughs> it is still entertaining right. at the end of the day. Yeah. And I know I've railed on some of the stereotypes here, and some of them bug me, but some of them just make me laugh. I mean, I don't really like the stereotype of, of Mashimir, but his crew, who are just diehard, like to the point of tears loyal to him. Mm -hmm. Like whenever he steps out and says, I'm going to go ahead and do this, you literally will have at least one or two people. It's like, Mashimi Senpai! Mashimi! Like literally covering their eyes with their arms. You know, that that strong, must be strong kind of cry. Right. And most of the time it's his second in command, which is mm -hmm. even better. The only time that he doesn't do that is when basically... The, the one girl is propositioning him to betray Mashimir to side with him or to side with her. Mm -hmm. So I do I do like Mashimir. I actually think he's a, he's a funny villain, uh, for lack of a better term. Uh, I think there might be... I really don't want to lose chests here, people. So if people are getting mad that I, it's taking forever for me to get anywhere... Oop. Okay, this doesn't have one, but... Here we go. We finally made it to the temple. And this is all thanks to you. There may be monsters still. Please, let me come with you a little while longer. Oh, um, all right. It sounds like Chaz isn't really all that convinced. And we already have an absent-minded rune. <laughs> so this is the soldier temple. Um... There's a way to get down there. I, okay. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't like a maze. So welcome everybody to the Soldier Temple. And the Arrow Prism is here. Ooh. So obviously we're going to take that. Um, get rid of a Trimate, I guess. Use a Trimate, yeah. Can anybody use it? Uh, Rune. Ah, uh, Rune. He's really the only one. Okay, there we go. We did it! It's the Arrow Prism! 
the hell was it going to show us the way to real cross? Right cross. Right cross. To... Gee, I don't know. You're sure a big help. Shut up, short stuff. Okay, so that's it. Let's go ahead and leave. Oh, this temple was such a... <gasps> oh! Wow, it's blindingly bright! And yet you're looking at it! <laughs> Oh. oh, how observant, short <laughs> stuff. Hold the arrow prism to the sky. Of course, the beam. <laughs> What's going on? It's so beautiful. Well, diamonds are a girl's best friend. Bright cross is at the end of the light. But that's beyond the skies. I will calculate the direction immediately. Uh, Seth, what's wrong? I've turned it into a monster. Uh, wow, Alex actually did a Colossus impression. <laughs> uh, uh, <gasps> Seth! It's not Seth! Really, what was your first clue there, Rika? That figure, it couldn't be. Dark Force! It can't be! Does this mean that Dark Force has been masquerading as a human? Yes! Seriously, a you're supposed to be the smart mage here. Yes, he's masquerading as a human! <laughs> that evil-minded monster! Can Dark Force also evolve? Well, third of all, are not here it comes! We have no choice! Let's go! And we get another Dark Force fight. And I actually like the design of this one. Yes, but that once looks again, the really music's good. Like... So, all right, let's go ahead and uh, do this. Let's get this fight going. So, barrier, um, ray blade, ray blade, ray blade, and then saner. And we're gonna go ahead and start things off strong with Legion. <laughs> NRG is barrier is up. So 290, mind blast. Mind blast. And it made uh, all three of them fall asleep. So that's that's how powerful this guy is, people. Positron bolt. Ray blade. <laughs> that's never gonna get old. Nope. <laughs> Ray blade. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Okay, 296, 314, 182. Wow, Rika. And corrosion. Oh, well, we're still good. Wake up, Rune. First rock. And Ray Blade. It's Ray Blade. Let's Ray Blade. 182. 325. 153. Corrosion again. Ooh. Can you thank you, Rune? Please wake up. Um, we're gonna have you recover. Uh, you know what? You're gonna double heal. I'm going to have you heal Rika. And Rika heal you. Actually, you know what? No, I'm not. Because, Rayblade, we're gonna do Nassar. Because everybody needs to get hit by this one. Nassar! 319. Legion! Ooh. Okay. Packs a punch. He does. That's okay. Because we pack a bigger one. Oh! One more. Burst rock. Ray blade. We're being quiet because we were really hoping, like, each round that that's it. Yeah. Just concentrating. Okay, so there we go. Rayblade, it's the last Rayblade. Um, let's try Ephes and see if it does anything to him. Three forty nine. Okay, so yeah, we're going with that. Ooh. Okay. Time for some healing. So first of all, recover. Recover. And we're going to do Crosscut, because I know that's the next big one. Mm. And you're going to do Nassar again. Ephes. Mm. 
There we go. Now we can keep the punishment up. Mind Blast. Mind Blast. At least we got two of them back. First Rock. Crosscut. And Double Slash. Two twenty two, one sixty eight. Ow! Jeez. First rock, cross cut. We're gonna have you gi res yourself. And of course, the one guy who does like three hundred plus damage. Oh! It's all right. We're okay. You okay. say that now. What are we? No, we're, we're truly not. Oh, but we're going to make it work. Um, so, Girez on Rika again. 194. Crosscut. Mind Blast. No! no. Shit! Do we have any... Uh, high Jammer, Barrier... Flare. Let's do Flare and see how well that does. 191. I'll take it. All right, they're all awake. Good. So, Flare. Crosscut. Gira's on Rika. And Ephes. 209. Ed 209. 195. No! Crap. Rune is, like, literally stuck in limbo at this point. Because his next ability... It'll either reset or he'll do FS the first time he wakes up. Here is again to Rika. Erosion. Flare. We have to do Gira's on Chaz. These are the slow rounds, people. Ha. <laughs> All right. Well, Rune woke up, so that's at least helpful. Let's put Barrier back up, see if that helps with the damage. And we have enough for one more Nassar. So we're going to do it. Oh, crap. <laughs> crap. I just barely realized Ren put up the Barrier. This is going to kill him. <laughs> Wake, Wake up. up. Oh, man. Okay, so at this point, I think... Yep. Shit. Chaz just became the healer. Oh, shit. We're... Uh, where's Girez? There it is. And it, no, it just means we, we switch out double slash. Dun, dun. 175. Girez. Ephes. Ephes. Yes! Yes, baby! I think we're going to make it there. Yeah, but I was kind of worried there, too, except Ren didn't get any XP for it. Red recovered. This is becoming a sticky situation. Chaz, we've got to hurry to Rycross. Huh? I bet the followers of the darkness are already aware of the way to Rycross through Dark Force. They're probably on their way there even as we speak. You mean they were spying on us? No, dipshit. I think that they were actually <laughs> oh. sitting there twiddling their thumbs. <laughs> Rycross. The only thing certain is the direction in which it is located. But no doubt, there is something there that they can't afford to let us have. So we'd better get that something. We'll have to hurry, otherwise they'll beat us to it! I have the direction of Rycross stored in memory, but... The light is now extending far beyond the sky! We'll just have to head towards it in the Landale. Alright, let's return to the spaceport! We've got to hurry! Okay, so... At this point, say it with me, people. Hurt us! Oh. Cannot be used here. Oh. Dirty oh. pool, people. Can I use it here? Yes! Okay. It's game logic. Don't, don't try to explain it, Alex. Don't, don't, <laughs> try, don't try to explain it. Don't let it explode your brain. Don't do anything like that. Okay, so we are fully recovered. And now we have the option, I believe, for Rycross. Yes. So, guys, this is point of no return. Mm-hmm. Not kidding here. 
You go um, there, you ain't going back. Nope. Once you go to Rycross, you cannot step back. At least to my knowledge, you can't. Oh, actually, before we go there, because I think as soon as we step there, we have a problem. 